Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, morning, Pastor. The theme of our worship today is demonstrated on the front of the bulletin, For Freedom Christ Has Set Us Free. And this is one of my favorite passages in the Bible, that Jesus Christ has set us free from sin and death and the devil and all the things that hold us back as human beings. And it's my hope and prayer that today I can share with you how little things lead to bigger things that kind of get us away from our commitment to the Lord Jesus. It doesn't take a whole lot. And so, please listen carefully. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to share them with me after worship. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord God, we thank you for the message that you have for us in worship today. We thank you, Lord, that you have lifted a tremendous burden from our backs. That the ravages of sin and death and the devil, of becoming slaves to sin, is always a part of life. And we'll see from the Bible how people have responded to this, how some have wanted to die because they thought they were no use in the world today. I have a feeling there are people who feel like that and who really don't have an answer. So Lord, we have the answer today. In Christ, we are free. Bless our worship in Jesus' name. Amen. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, God who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Let us testify to our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us read responsibly Psalm 16. <clears throat> Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who live for God, will suffer more and more. I will not pour out my nutrition blood in such cases. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices, my body also will rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful ones see you You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. The Old Testament reading is from 1 Kings 19, 9b through 21. And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. 
The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. For the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came, and go to the de desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Haziel king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshai, king over Israel, and anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel Moholah, to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escaped the sword of Haziel, and Elijah will put to death any who escaped the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the twelfth pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said, and then I will come with you. Go back, Elijah replied. What have I done to you? So Elisha left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and become his servant. The epistle reading this morning is from uh, Galatians 5, 1, 13 through 25. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourself be burdened against the yoke of slavery. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. The Gospel reading is from Luke 9, 51-62. Please rise. As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. And he sent messengers on ahead who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. Then he and his disciples went to another village. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. And Jesus replied, 
No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Here is the gospel. Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. The first time I saw the Statue of Liberty, I was on a troop ship coming home from Germany where I had served in the United States Army. The Statue of Liberty is something we can truly be proud of. For one of the first times, a country that overwhelmed another country in war looked to the rebuilding of the countries that they had defeated. That was new. That was something that had not happened before. And it really did demonstrate the Christian basis of our country to go and try to help a country that really was devastated to get back to normal. The Statue of Liberty has meant freedom for many people. Millions of people have passed through there because they didn't have freedom. They longed for it. They wanted it very badly. And now, finally, they have it. How do you feel about freedom? How free do you feel at this time in your life? We just passed by the Easter season. Many people were disappointed. Many people didn't think that what would happen to Jesus, that he would suffer and die on a cross, they didn't think that would happen. And so this caused people to do all kinds of things and think all kinds of things. Then there was the man <clears throat> from the Old Testament, Elijah. Elijah. He was so disappointed, he was so unhappy, that he asked God to let him die. He thought that all the people of Israel had turned their backs on God. He thought that no one was faithful anymore, and the only thing that he had left 
was to die. And so he asked God to let him die. But then Elijah came to believe that God could do the impossible. That God could do what he didn't think could happen. He believed that there was no one to hear God's word, that he was the only one, and so he asked twice that he could die. Well, God sent a wind, he sent an earthquake, and he sent fire. And he encouraged Elijah to give this a second thought. To come back to him, to serve him faithfully, and he would be blessed. And that's what happened. And do you remember what happened to Elijah? He appeared with Moses and Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. And so that was God putting his blessing on Elijah and what he had done. He saw himself as a failure. He saw himself as one who wanted to die and get away from God. And then God blessed him and took care of him. And then there was Jesus. In the gospel lesson, we're told that Jesus set his face for Jerusalem. Many people misunderstood this. The Samaritans, who were the enemies of the Jews, turned their back on him. And one person after another turned their back because they didn't think that this should happen to Jesus. In fact, it got so bad that even Peter said to Jesus, you can't do this, this can't happen to you. And what did Jesus say? He said, get behind me, Satan. You're not on the side of God, but on the side of man. So even the disciples got discouraged with what was happening to Jesus. And I'm wondering if we all got totally honest here, if we couldn't admit that we too have these feelings what's going to happen is God going to prevail am I going to be blessed am I going to have the things that people didn't have because they were so discouraged even the Samaritan people wouldn't go with Jesus he was going to Jerusalem and since they were his the enemies of the Jews they turned their back on him also. But even then, Jesus had forgiveness and mercy. And that was his message, as it always was, the ministry of mercy and forgiveness. The disciples wanted Jesus to put fire down from heaven on the Samaritans. They wanted him to punish them for turning their back on him. And what did Jesus do? It says, Jesus rebuked them. So even in the last week of his ministry, there was mercy and forgiveness. And then Jesus came upon three people. Remember, he was close to suffering and death. And these three people demonstrate how quickly you and I as human beings can turn our eyes away from Jesus to something else. The first man said, Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. He was warning the man. Then he said to another man, follow me. And the man said, Lord, let me go and first and bury my father. Isn't that an entirely natural human reaction? To go and take care of your father and see to it that he has a decent burial. And then another one gets, came and said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Isn't that natural? Isn't it totally natural to want to go and take care of your family and see them off and tell them where you want them to go? But see, that's the problem that we have. Putting the things that come before us, before the Lord Jesus, and then letting things become farther and farther away from him. Another one said, I will follow you, Lord, 
But let me first say farewell. And Jesus said, no one puts his head to the plow and looks back, is fit for the kingdom of God. So here are three people who have what appear to be very logical and real reasons to turn away from Jesus. And he knows what's going on in their mind. He knows how easily they are tempted and how easily they are giving in to temptation. But you see, that's our problem too. That's the problem that you and I have when you and I are faced with decisions that involve our family, our church, our loved ones, whoever. Will Jesus come first to me? Will I be so free that I can set everything aside and trust only in my Lord Jesus? So we pray, forgive us our sins as we have been forgiven. We pray, whoever would be your great among you must be your servant. And then love is the fulfilling of the law. Well, in the text, we also have another thing to warn us. Let Jesus be first and foremost in our lives. My brothers and sisters, we are called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. And isn't that a challenge, to humbly respond to other people? To humbly take into account what people are saying and doing? To humbly forgive as you and I have been forgiven? But then there are some very serious ones that come up later in the epistle lesson. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to, to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery. Idolatry and witchcraft. Hatred, discord. Jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do you see this happening? Do you see this thing going on even among church people? You see things that you know are wrong but that people are taking for granted and doing anyway. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in touch, in step, with the Spirit. So we're called to walk in the Spirit. Be controlled by the Holy Spirit of God. Do the things we know we are called to do even though we have reasons to not do them. If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So hold fast to the word of God. Hold fast to this word which is so revealing to us, reminding us who we are and what we are called to do. But most of all, remember that we are part of the ministry of Jesus Christ, the ministry of mercy and forgiveness. And that's what we're called to do every single minute of our lives. God grant this for Jesus' sake. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord God, we come before you with the prayers of your people. We pray for Dottie, Stephen, Greg, Julie, Trish, Karen, Roseanne, Dave, Ken, Marianne, Elizabeth, Gwen, Shirley, Kathy, Pam, Barry, Lana. Lord, we pray for each person who is here in your house today. We pray that we may stand firm in the Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, that when temptations come, we will recognize them for what they are. That we will see who you are and who you have called us to be. People set free by the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for the people in the Ukraine. We pray for people all over the world who are discouraged and wonder if you are there and what you are doing. Lord, we know you are there. We know what you are doing. Give us faith, Lord, to trust that and live by it. We bring together all of our prayers in the perfect prayer of our Lord Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive the world who has trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. announcements. We are going to be having a congregation voting meeting on July 10th right after worship. Um, we need to vote on our budget for next year 
If you cannot make it, there will be a link. We will live stream it so you can watch it online. Um, but we would ask that as many people be here in person for this meeting. Um, after we talk about the budget and approve it, we will also be talking, um, I have a transition team update about pastors. I will be sharing via email. Um, if you don't get emails, Bev will have them. I'm gonna share some links of one of the pastors that we would like to present to the church. Um, so you'll be able to watch some of his sermons. Again, if you don't get email or don't wanna do that, you could always come to church one Sunday or during the week um, and we can have the links up for you guys to watch them. Um, we also, the transition team does have other things going on as well, so we will be able to update you on all of that um, then. Next softball game will be Thursday the 7th um, at 7.30. I heard they won a, the other day, so congratulations to our team. Um, VBS, I will have all the sign-up stuff next week. Sorry, the week just got away from me, um, and we've been having more kids sign up, so I want to make sure I have like a good amount of numbers or what I need for it. Um, we have 42 kids signed up right now for VBS, so we're super excited for that. Um, please keep sharing our preschool information. We still have a few spots available so that we can have preschool this year. Um, just also to... The council notes will now always be in the newsletter. So if you're interested in what's happening during our council meetings, you can read all the notes. They're in your newsletter. So grab a newsletter if you need a newsletter. And then the last thing that I have is Joe had his birthday this week, and Christy has her birthday next week, or this coming week. So if we could sing happy birthday to them. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to my Christy, happy birthday to you, God's blessings to you, God's blessings to you, God's blessings to my Christy, God's blessings to you. And then we have tons of snacks. So go ahead and grab those. Yes, Jim. One last thing. This Tuesday is the, the primary. Uh, I would ask that all of you, this is very important. It's, it's going to detect the, the fate of our country for the next two years and probably four years. Uh, that you get out and vote, no matter what your opinions are. Get out and vote. Encourage your people, your family and your friends to vote. It's very important. We, we complain about it and then we don't, do, we don't vote, which kind of defeats <laughs> the whole purpose. So. Yes. <laughs> So make sure you wave to the camera. Thank you, Pastor John, for filling in. And we'll see you all next Sunday. I want to want to thank people for all they do. Uh, Jim for reading the lessons. Anita and Gary for their 46th wedding anniversary. Yeah. 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 Wow. That's really something in this day and age. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess that's it. I, I thought there was something else, but... Uh, well, thank you, Pastor John, for coming in. Oh, you're welcome. The Lord be with you.